Hey everybody, I just made a couple notes. Um, first of all, I want to thank my family, my friends, the incredible people of Chicago and all over the country and the world who have prayed for me, who have supported me, who have shown me so much love. No one will ever know how much that has meant to me and I will forever be grateful. I want you to know that not for a moment was it in vain. I have been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I have been accused of. This has been an incredibly difficult time, honestly one of the worst of my entire life. But I am a man of faith and I am a man that has knowledge of my history and I would not bring my family, our lives or the movement through a fire like this. I just wouldn't. So I want to thank my legal counsel from the bottom of my heart. And I would also like to thank the state of Illinois for attempting to do what's right. Now I'd like nothing more than to just get back to work and move on with my life. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. So again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for faith and thank you to God. Bless y'all. Thank you very much. We heard there from Jesse Smollett uh, after the police in Chicago have dropped all those charges against him. He said uh, that he has been truthful and consistent from day one, that this has been uh, one of the worst episodes of his entire life. He called himself a man of faith and said he wanted to get on with his life. I want to bring in now CN legal analyst Joey Jackson. Your thoughts about what we just heard. Well, number one, the first thought, of course, is that in the eyes of the law, he is now free and clear. He has no more issues, no concerns. The case is dismissed. It's sealed, as you heard the lawyer say, and as a result of that, he goes on with his life. The two other issues, of course, as it relates to forfeiting his bond, he forfeits his bond. That amounts to, I believe, $10,000. It was set at $100,000. Looks like the district attorney, uh, county attorney, considered his community service, considered the person he was. Uh, so that's number one, and we need to make that clear. And so no more in terms of Jesse Smollett moving forward in any criminal process, in any system, that's done. Number two, I was looking for whether or not there would be statements as it relates to the police department and they're overstepping here and the sergeant going on TV and essentially blasting Jesse Smollett. There was not. It looked like there was more conciliation in terms of, you know what, they just wanted to address the issue that this is done, it's behind them, we're moving forward. And so I'm, I'm still left, though, with wondering and considering the statement of the county attorney, why he had to forfeit his on why they evaluated the community service. <clears throat> Those will be open questions. We'll never know, Nia, in terms of specifically what was the evidence that they looked at and evaluated. Was it the fact that those two brothers were damaged goods? That, was it anything relating to their prior record or history? Was it related to the nature of their story? For a case to go from the, dis the district attorney's office here, the state's attorney, looking at 16 counts in an indictment, $100,000 bond, 10000 you put up to make that bond, on a full throttle prosecution, man hours, a thousand man hours, 12 detectives assigned to a case, the sergeant going saying we got the goods, we even have more than I'm suggesting, and then all of a sudden, never mind, it's dismissed, he's moving on. You have to wonder whether or not they overplayed their hand, that is, that they just went after him so relentlessly and everything else, it poisons the jury pool, how do you get a fair trial from this, wiser minds need to prevail, prevail. it's time to heal this community, enough is enough as it relates to lying to the police or alleged allegedly lying, which of course in the eyes of the law he did not as a result of this finding, and so everyone moves forward. And CNN Chief Media Correspondent Brian Stelter, he's going to join us now. You've been talking uh, to Jesse Smollett's attorneys. What did they tell you, Brian? Yeah, and I've been asking, is there going to be a civil case? Is Smollett now going to try to pursue uh, a case against uh, the authorities? Uh, no comment from the lawyers about that. Uh, but, but the view from Smollett's camp here is that he uh, was uh, treated so terribly by the, Here's the Jesse local Smollett authorities. Again. Jesse Smollett outside the courthouse here. Mark Garagos, Tina Glandian, are you pleased with the work that they've done too? Jesse, can you talk to us about how you feel and what's going on? How do you plan to, plan, uh, plan to spend the rest of your day, Jesse? Jesse, 
How you feel, Jesse? You feel good? You look good. You look good. <laughs> And there was Jussie Smollett uh, there talking to fans, posing for pictures outside the courthouse there. I, I'm going to bring in CNN national correspondent Ryan Young, who has been following this case. This is a moment for the community there in Chicago, who have, just like us, have seen all of the twists and turns of this case over the last many months. Yeah, you couldn't write a reality TV show better than the one that's played out since January 29th. Um, I honestly feel like when we see the superintendent and the mayor later on and they have their news conference, I'm wondering if they're going to punch back at some of the things that were said here today. Um, I'm told not a lot of people knew about this deal. And in fact, when this sort of happened and the charges were going to be dropped, people were surprised. They were shocked. There was a buzz in this courtroom that people weren't anticipating this. They felt so strongly about the information that had been given to everybody about this investigation. They just thought this was headed for a plea deal, not for charges being dropped completely. And then when you hear that and you see everything that's happening, and then he stands in front of the mic, and one thing I will say is he was restrained. If you remember that interview he did with Robin Roberts, I mean, he was uh, very vocal and he was very into it. He obviously read from a statement and was very prepared for this. But I can also tell you the woman that he had as his attorney, um, Pat Holmes, is someone who people in this state know very well. And you could tell by the way she was talking on that mic, she had an understanding for what was going on here that many of us don't know. There's something that she said here that a lot of people didn't pick up on, I think. Parts of this is going to be sealed. So I'm wondering if we're ever going to get a chance to see all the evidence that was involved in this case. Because, of course, as a reporter, I would love to go through this and see how police arrived to the location they did. What did the Olsen Darrell brothers say to them that made them go out so strongly and say this? And you have to remember, it's two different entities. Will the police department now look at the state's uh, attorney's office and say, hey, you guys left us hanging a dry on this one. And will they say anything more about what they feel about this? Will the mayor come forward? Mayor Rahm Emanuel, will he say how he feels about this case finally? There are so many questions about this. But every single week from the time this case has unfolded, we've got new bits of evidence that sort of just boggle your mind in terms of what's the next twist and what's the next turn. There, the question was asked, do you want to see the two men charged who allegedly attacked you? And there was that pause there, and no one really wanted to answer that question. So what happens next? Because honestly, you can't have all these man hours, you can't have something happen and a crime be reported, and then nothing happens from there, this is just going to all go away? I think that's the question here. And there's a credibility factor, I think, in all of this. Um, there are people's credibilities on the line when it comes to this, not only Jesse Smollett's credibility, but then you have to start thinking about the police department, the city, and the state's attorney's office. All this has been sort of swirling around. And then I brought this up before. You think about all the things that this has touched. You think about Northwestern Hospital, where they had to fire more than a dozen workers who apparently went in and looked at his medical files and against their HIPAA rules, and they were all fired. So this, on every single step of this, you see another drop. And on top of that, just think, this was not captured on video because of the fact the camera was pointed in a different direction. So we don't even have that. But we do know the detectives apparently were able to track them in using ride share. You go through those steps from there. We know they're both dark-skinned African-American males. So why was the conversation of white skin ever a part of this conversation? We believe for a while that maybe two white men had allegedly attacked Jesse Smollett. Well, that wasn't the case. So what happens from there? And then this here today, they were saying that he paid them for personal training. So why or how did they tell the police that it was something different? At some point, we need to talk to the Olsen Darrell brothers' attorneys as well. Right. And, and one of the things you heard from Patricia Brown Holmes, who was the attorney for Jesse Smollett, her message for the police was don't try cases uh, in public. And we, of course, remember that epic press conference from the Chicago police superintendent uh, who was indignant about what he called a hoax perpetrated by Jesse Smollett. 